Welcome to the final section of the video series, Mastering React Native. We've covered a lot, including animations, push notifications, transitions, redux, normalization, selectors, and more. In this final section, we'll be reviewing some more advanced tips and troubleshooting concepts. In the first video of the section, let's review JavaScript and React Native memory leaks and how to avoid them. This is a topic we briefly touched on in section five, but one of the most common reasons a memory leak happens is not properly releasing a timer or listener when the component unmounts. When we change the listener in section five to correctly unmount the notification open listener, we ensure that the listener's function will no longer retain the this variable, which takes up memory. Here is some fake test code to demonstrate memory leaks that can occur from closures. A closure is a function enclosed in another function with reference to the global state. In this case, the hour function inside of the dot sum and set interval are referencing the constants set from this dot props and previous props. The memory leak issue though, comes from having multiple closures inside of a single function. In this case, the scope object is shared by all closures defined in the componented update function. So it will retain all variables using at least one closure there. Unfortunately, the first closure captures prev props, and even though that closure is not being used later on and is definitely not being retained after it is used to calculate clock props has changed, it still makes all other closures retain prev props, including the set interval closure. That doesn't make sense. It takes up too much memory. One way to solve this is by breaking out the arrow function to set the scope to another function. You can do the same for the set interval function. Not only will this solve a potentially major memory leak, but also clean up the readability of the code. There are a couple of ways to monitor memory leaks. In Xcode, there's a pound for this. You can see there's a spike in memory when the app is reloaded. But you will also notice that the memory appears higher. On each subsequent reload, the app retains a certain amount of data and memory. In dev mode, some React Native core modules retain objects only to be able to provide more descriptive warning messages. So if you're testing for a memory leak, remember to run the app in production mode. To do that, go to product, scheme, edit scheme, and then choose release. Before I show how to use Safari to test for leaks, another helpful trip besides running in production mode is remove console log lines. These calls hold a reference to the entire object being logged out, which takes up memory. In Safari, you'll need to turn on the developer tools. Now to inspect the iOS emulator, let's inspect the JS context. Note, I like to automatically launch the JS context because this will launch a new screen whenever you hot reload the app. Now that the developer tools are launched, let's go to the timeline tab. It's here that we'll be able to take snapshots of the memory the iPhone simulator is using and compare them. Our app doesn't have any memory leaks, but you will notice that over time, the memory usage does go up. So let's reload and take a snapshot of the memory. Now that we have a base to compare to, we can swipe through the app and cause the next screen to render. We'd expect the memory used to be a little larger here because we simply have more images stored in the device. Another thing that can cause a lot of memory usage though are animations. Let's see the difference now. Now we'll select the before and after memories we wanna to compare to compare them, before and after. Cool, now we can see the retained sizes of the various objects. Retained size gives you the size of the object plus the size of all the other objects that are retained directly or indirectly from that object. Often when looking for memory leaks, the culprit is the object with the highest retained size. This might not be easy to read, but this is the animation object. Our logic object isn't that large, but assuming this was the thing causing the problem, we could expand it and examine the retain path, which will go down to the root of where the object is located. In a class, for example, you'd be able to see all the functions inside of it. This would help if you were looking for specific functions that is leaking memory. Like everything else, I'd recommend playing around with this. If you ever find the app running so really slow, even as a release variant, then you might have a memory leak that needs to be solved. 